I had just graduated university and was drowning in student debt, so I decided to move in with my older brother Max until I could afford a place of my own. The last time I'd actually seen him was five years ago, at his wedding. He'd married this awful woman named Naomi. I knew at the time that she was a gold digger, but I was too afraid to say anything. After the wedding, Max cut off all contact with me and the rest of our family, all thanks to Naomi. I didn't hear from him again until after they'd divorced, but even then, he wasn't the same. It was like his spirit was broken. Honestly, I was surprised that he agreed to let me move in. I was hoping that living together would help us reconnect, but I was wrong. After staying with him for a month, I'd only seen him maybe four or five times. He spent all day and night working in his office. We were living in the same house, but it was like he was a complete stranger. We didn't even eat together. Then, one night, I was in the kitchen when he came downstairs and said that he had to run some errands. I thought that was really strange because it was 11 o'clock at night. I tried to ask him where he was going, but he said he didn't have time to explain. He reminded me once more to stay out of his office, and then he ran out of the house. The next morning, I noticed that his car wasn't in the driveway. I tried calling him, but he didn't answer. I could hear his phone ringing from inside his office, meaning that he'd left it behind. I knew I wasn't supposed to go in there, but I didn't have a choice. I was worried about him. So I opened the office door, surprised that he'd left it unlocked. All the lights were off, but his computer screen was still glowing. He'd kept his browser open, and it was clear that he'd gotten into some weird, dark web stuff. I saw some sort of web page, mostly black, with a couple dozen tiny logos of different weapons, everything from ropes to explosives. Four of the weapons were highlighted. Chains, a baseball bat with nails sticking out, two different knives, and a blowtorch. Those were the ones he'd selected, and at the bottom of the screen was an address and a price. 600 bitcoins. I took a photo on my phone and then ran to my car. If my brother was mixed up in something illegal, I had to stop him. Armed with some mace, I drove to the address, which was an old warehouse just outside town. The place looked completely abandoned, except for Mark's car parked behind some dumpsters. I instantly regretted not calling the police. This was not a safe place, but it was too late now. I had to go inside and see for myself. I crawled through a gap in the chain link fence and found a side entrance that was unlocked. Very quietly, I snuck inside. The inside of the warehouse was divided into several dark rooms, each filled with old factory equipment and metal cages. It was very quiet, except for a soft clinking of chains from somewhere in the back. I followed that sound until I made it to a metal door. I gathered up my courage and stepped inside. Right away, I saw a woman chained to the floor. Half of her face was horribly burned, but I could still recognize her. This was Naomi, Max's ex-wife. She was so out of it that she didn't notice me at first. In front of her was a table, covered with the weapons that Max had ordered on his computer. The knives, the baseball bat, and the flamethrower. I was so disgusted by what I saw that I was frozen in place. Suddenly, Naomi's chains banged against the ground. She'd seen me. She reached forward, silently begging me for help, and I saw that two of her fingers looked broken. What had Max done to her? I scooped up the key on the table and ran to Naomi. I had to free her. I crouched down and asked her what was going on. She tried to answer, but I couldn't really understand. Still, I didn't need an explanation to know that Max had spent all night torturing her. With her fingerless hand, she gestured toward a door to the side. I assumed that Max was in there. I had to get her free before he came back. My hands shaking, I unlocked her chains and helped her stand up. She mumbled something at me that sounded a bit like, Hurry! As I guided her toward the exit, I heard the door open behind us. Max was wearing a welder's mask over his face. He ran to us. I wanted to think that he wouldn't attack his own sister, but after what he'd done to Naomi, I didn't know what he was capable of. He was running at full speed. Without thinking, I grabbed the baseball bat on the table and swung it into his stomach. The nails dug into him and he instantly crumpled to the ground. Had I killed my own brother? I felt terrible. But when I pulled off the mask, I saw that it wasn't Max at all. It was a total stranger. Obviously the hitman that he'd hired online. But then, where was Max? 
Naomi kept gesturing toward the side room, so I stepped over the body and peered inside. There was Max, asleep on the couch. He was smiling. I guess he just wanted to stay here while the hitman tortured his ex-wife. I pulled out my phone to call 911, but Naomi touched my shoulder. Go, she tried to say. She looked at me, her one good eye pleading. That's when I made an awful choice. Okay, I said, and I left her there. As I walked out of the warehouse, I looked over my shoulder and saw Naomi grab the blowtorch. When I was outside, I called the police, and as I waited for them to come, I could hear someone, a man, screaming through the walls. I've always loved my neighborhood. It's quiet, friendly, the kind of place where you can leave your doors unlocked without worrying about anything. I've lived in these suburbs pretty much my whole life. They've always been cute, quaint, and exactly what people expect when they envision Midtown America. We don't all know each other's names or anything, this isn't Mayberry, but we did all have a good understanding of the community and how things flowed. Crime was at a minimum, at least from what I recall. But as we know, those kind of things can always change. During the COVID pandemic, that's when it happened for us. Strange faces started appearing, and I noticed people who didn't quite fit in. This was definitely happening all over the US. People were flooding out of cities by the hundreds if not thousands, and overflowed into the little outskirt communities and suburbs, thinking they would be more lax with protocols and procedures. And whereas they were right, that was only because we had a limited population. Once an extra 10,000 people rolled into town, filled up the hotels and started sleeping in their cars on the streets. Things changed and we had the same laws and restrictions as those big cities. At first I thought it was just my imagination, but as the weeks went by, I realized that something was off. It wasn't anything major, but definitely found its way onto my radar. I was working from home at the time and with less to do. I found myself keeping an eye on the neighborhood. And that's when I saw this beat up old car with rusted wheel wells and shrouded windows. It just looked like trouble, parked in front of the Johnson house, where high school age kids lived. I thought maybe it belonged to a visiting friend, but something about it just made me uneasy. This was the thing that had me feeling off, as I'd never seen such a questionable car inside our neighborhood. I kept an eye on it, but didn't see anyone or anything. Hey, hon, come check this out. I called to my wife, nodding towards the window. She came over and peered out onto the street. Uh, what am I looking at? That car, doesn't it just look off to you? She frowned. Maybe it's just a friend visiting the kids over there. She asked, pointing to the Johnson house. Yeah, yeah, maybe you're right, I said, dismissing it. I just came to this weird conclusion, you know, it looks off. We agreed that it was out of place, but there was nothing else really to do, not unless we wanted to call the police, and I wasn't that invested. It just felt definitely overboard in the moment, crossing a line, so to speak. It's probably nothing anyway, but we made a note to keep an eye on the street and see if it left. It did, sporadically, coming and going at random intervals and all without ever seeing the driver. It was mysterious, but not the end of the world. So I ended up just forgetting about it. It was probably just COVID paranoia clouding up my brain. Fast forward a week. I noticed the police are now patrolling the neighborhood. Now that was unusual. We never saw cops around here unless it was a speeding ticket or a lost cat. I didn't put two and two together at first, just figured it was a random patrol or maybe they were looking for some troublemaking kids. Not the first time a group of high schoolers would tear through backyards to get away from whatever nonsense that they had orchestrated. They patrolled one day and then the next, and by day three, I remembered that weird car and thought, hmm, maybe something is up after all. Then I saw an officer taking a report from the house next to the Johnsons. My curiosity was piqued at this point. What else did I need, you know? 
it was pretty obvious that something was going on at this point. And I was being nosy and wanted to know the severity. I watched from my window as the neighbor explained something in what looked like vague detail to the officer, who was writing it all down. What's going on? I asked my wife as we watched the officer nodding and taking notes. Maybe somebody reported a suspicious person, she suggested. Or maybe they were having a party over there. Aren't we not supposed to have gatherings larger than six or something like that? She was right, this was pretty early on in COVID and we did have those stupid rules in place like that. I'm suddenly put back at ease. It probably had to be something with COVID, probably something really stupid, and here I had myself all worked up. Still though, I kept an eye on the scene until that cop left and everything went back to quiet. My wife and I settled in, hung around, had dinner, and forgot about the weirdness just outside. We sat down to watch some Netflix for the evening and found that we couldn't get anything to work. The internet was connected, but the speed was non-existent. Nothing would load, only spinning buffer circles. After a few minutes of tinkering, we didn't know what else to do. A couple of calls to friends, to customer service, and nobody had an answer. We tried resetting the router, and that worked, but only for a minute. Finally, we gave up and just hung out on the couch. As the night wore on, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was definitely weird and off. I kept glancing out the window. That's when I saw them out there again. An unmarked police cruiser, parked down the lane, partially hidden. My heart began to race as I realized whatever was going on, it was serious this time. Could that have been what knocked out the internet? Hey hon, come take a look at this. I whispered, nodding to the police car. She peered out the window, her eyes widening. What are they doing out there? I shook my head. I don't know, but I'm definitely going to find out tomorrow. We huddled at the window for a little bit longer, waiting to see if anything else happened. It didn't. Nothing stirred, no lights, no sounds. We talked about it amongst ourselves again, maybe thinking it could be connected. And if it was, how? And above all that, why? Why was all this weird shit happening all of a sudden? Again, I know we were probably just a little on edge from being literally invaded with COVID refugees and all kinds of other awful stories about squatters and the like, or even the whole communities being taken over by wackadoos. As we went to bed, I couldn't shake that feeling still. Something's going on in our quiet neighborhood, and I was determined to get to the bottom of it. I'm going to talk to the neighbors tomorrow. I told my wife as we settled in, maybe even the police too. She nodded with her eyes still fixed on the window. All right, hon, but be careful. I nodded, but as I drifted off to sleep, I couldn't shake that feeling, the feeling that we were caught up in something that we definitely shouldn't be. The next morning I popped up, got myself ready for the day, and then just bided my time until I thought it'd be appropriate to cross the street and start my line of questioning. I almost wanted to see if the neighbors were up and about, maybe even come outside before I went out and bothered them. I was nervous about what I might discover. Also, I was nervous that I wouldn't discover anything at all. I walked over to the neighbor's house just a minute later, feeling this sense of unease. The street was empty, no sign of that strange car or the police car. That was kind of annoying because they were like my go-to pieces of that weirdo evidence, the cars on the block. Without them there, I was without anything tangible to show them, if that makes any sense. Either way, I went up to the door and knocked, and after a brief moment, it opened to reveal my neighbor, all clean cut and looking sharp, least suspicious guy in the world. Hey man, what's up? I asked, trying to sound super casual. Not much, he replied, stepping aside to let me in. Just dealing with some weird internet issues. I nodded sympathetically. Yeah, we've been having some trouble too, but the police were here, right? What was that all about? He hesitated, looking around nervously. To be honest with you, I'm not really sure. They just asked us some questions about our web activity and then took a statement. I frowned. That's weird. Did they say what it was about? He shook his head. No, they just said it was some kind of security matter. 
We talked a bit more and I mentioned the car, but he didn't know anything about it. He said he was just having web trouble, pretty much the exact same issues that we were having. And then his internet service provider actually reached out to him, advised him to unplug his modem and his router, everything that made the network, and wait from there. He thought it sounded like a scam or something, but it turned out it was a legit company, so he did as instructed. The next day, the police showed up, confiscated the equipment, and that's the last he's heard. We said our goodbyes after that, and then I went on my way. I left his house feeling more perplexed than ever. As I walked back home, I decided I'd try my internet again. Maybe it was working now. But when I connected, I found that it was still not working properly. It said connected, but I couldn't access any websites or send messages. Whatever it was, it was like it didn't want anything outbound at all. I spent the next hour troubleshooting, scanning for viruses and checking for any possible hiccups that might be causing any issues. I didn't find shit, so as a last ditch option, I unplugged everything and let it sit for a while. And then when I plugged it back in, I reset the network and changed both the name and the password. For some reason in the moment, I thought this might help. As this was all going along, I just happened to take a look outside, and there, I saw that dingy piece of crap car. I knew it had to be involved in what the hell was going on. Two houses with no internet, police patrolling at all hours. It sounds like a straight up conspiracy, I know. But I finished up my network stuff and hopped on my phone, which still worked without Wi-Fi. Started looking for answers there, mostly just on Reddit. Most of the posts and comments that I was finding talked about compromised internet security, but that couldn't be us. My wife and I didn't open spam or visit funky websites or anything of the sort. Just then, there was a heavy knock at our door. I hesitated, feeling a sense of dread. Who could that be? The police coming to take my modem now? I thought about my neighbor and the cops coming to take his stuff. It's definitely a spooky feeling in the moment, so I sympathized with him. I thought maybe he was up to something no good, something private. Maybe the cops caught him and were in the middle of a bust or something. I knew I wasn't up to anything nefarious, but someone was here anyway. I slowly make my way to the door and open it, to find a disheveled young man walking away from my entryway. It was like he knocked and then all of a sudden got cold feet. Remember, it took me a minute to actually get up and answer the door. I figured maybe he just got tired of waiting. Figured I wasn't home. Either way, this dopey looking kid definitely wasn't the cops. Hey, wait! I called out, feeling a sense of unease. What'd you need? He turned back and his eyes were sunken and skin pale. Why'd you do that? He asked, his voice barely above a whisper. He then stopped in place and kept his beady little eyes on me. Uh, do what? Why'd you do that? He asked again, but this time he almost screamed it. It was like some truly unhinged psycho stuff, eyes bulging out of his head, spit flying out of his mouth. I could tell whatever this kid was talking about. He was pissed, definitely feeling some kind of passion. Still, I'd never seen him before, I've never dealt with him, so I didn't really know what to say or how to respond. He shook his head and walked away, leaving me even more confused and uneasy than ever. As I watched him disappear into the distance, I realized that I was definitely out of my element with all this. Internet issues, the police visit, the strange car, it has to be connected, and it was all closing in on us. I'm not a cop, I'm not an investigator. I'm not even really a fighter. I just felt the weight and proximity of something potentially dangerous. I wanted out. I wanted police on site immediately. I stepped back inside, my heart racing with fear. What is going on and why am I now being targeted? As I waited for my wife to come home, I couldn't shake that feeling that we were in grave danger. The slow burn of unease had turned into a raging fire of dread. I figured the cops would show up any minute to throw me in the slammer, but for what? Who knows? Maybe someone was framing me right then and there, 
loading all kinds of crazy illegal shit onto my computer and tablet without me even knowing about it. Because that could happen, right? My wife got home and we talked it out. I filled her in on all the weird happenings. She agreed that we needed to contact the authorities and find out exactly what's going on. They were all too eager to come over the next day and from our little meeting, got the scoop. The police were trying to pinpoint a person they were building a case against. It turned out to be the guy that knocked on our door that day. His name was Kevin or Keith, something like that, and he was a newly displaced COVID refugee, homeless and half out of his mind. The thing about Kevin was that he was a techie, and he had an overflowing well of knowledge on computers and computer science. Kevin had been driving around the Midwest, bumming internet here and there. It started with coffee shops and random stores, gas stations, really anywhere without an unprotected link. Some of these networks blocked access and permissions though, so Kevin got pretty good at routing these firewalls and restrictors. Over time, with prolonged drug use and a dwindling relationship with reality, Kevin started going down all kinds of rabbit holes of conspiracy. He also stopped sleeping apparently, just aimlessly driving from town to town, state to state. As it went on, he started using private networks, as he figured out how to get into most of them. Some kind of weird backdoor access, with all the people who hadn't changed their stock network password. He wanted to use private networks because Kevin was looking at crazy shit on the dark web, conspiracy stuff, and mountains of illegal images. I don't even want to say what kind. That's when he landed on our street. No one knows why he came here, or where he came from, or what his actual plan was. The guy was using uppers every chance he got, mostly pills, as he had a prescription but also had meth in his car. Kevin had worked his way through three states just to do drugs and steal internet while parked out in front of my house. With his windows shrouded just enough, we couldn't see him in there. Although after the cops finally busted him, they said he opened up the space between his back seat and trunk to further cut it out so he could hide out in there without people seeing him. After they had the case built up with enough evidence and surveillance, then had him pretty much cornered out there on the street that afternoon, they sprung and arrested him. When they got the car opened, it almost looked like something out of Mad Max or Robocop. Wires running everywhere, batteries hooked up to all kinds of things, light bars and power packs. Even had this little fan rigged up inside the trunk. It was incredible and actually impressive to see. This kid was probably a legitimate genius, but didn't have a useful capacity for it. Got arrested, but not for very long. Car was towed away, never to be seen again. I hope trying out got that kid on the straight and narrow. Drugs do weird things to people. World events do even weirder things to people, like COVID. But I guess nothing gets a person more out of whack than the internet does. Our official merch store is finally here. If you want to support more of our channel, check out our merch shop. The link is in the description down below. See you on the next video.